In this video, we shall discuss how to calculate the capital gains that are exempted from tax. I have already uploaded two videos under capital gains, which explains what is capital gain, how to calculate the taxable capital gain and a few solved problems. Let's move on to this video. The first section that we are going to see is section 54. As per this section, if an individual or an assessee is transferring a property that he is using for his residence. Transferring means selling. If he is selling a property which, is, which he is using for, for residence, then the capital gain arising out of that transfer will be exempted. It will be exempted provided he satisfies the following rule, following condition. Let's see what's the condition is. So, the assessee is transferring what? He is selling his residential house. This residential house which he is selling must be held by him for more than 24 months. That is from the date of purchase till the date of sales at least 24 months he must be the owner of the asset. He must have used the asset for residential purpose. Okay. Now when he sells this asset what will happen? He will get a capital gain. This capital gain will be exempted if he invests the capital gain in purchasing a new asset. What asset he is going to purchase? He is going to again purchase a residential house. He can purchase the house or he can construct the house. So he is selling a residential house and he is buying the residential house out of the capital gain. Then this capital gain will be exempted. Okay. Who can claim this exemption? Only an individual and a HUF. That is, apart from individual and HUF, if a partnership firm or company, uh, this type of assessees, if they are selling the asset, they cannot claim deduction under section 54. Not deduction, exemption under section 54. And the time limit, I told you one residential house is sold and one residential house is purchased. So, the time limit for purchasing the new asset will be one year before the date of sales or two years after the date of sales the assessee should have purchased the asset. So if the assessee is purchasing the asset he can purchase it one year before the date of sales or two years after the date of sales. If he is constructing if he is constructing the house he can construct it within 3 years from the date of transfer. That is 3 years after the date of sales. So this is the time period within which he has to buy the new residential house. So if there is any unutilized amount, this unutilized amount can be deposited in the capital gains account scheme and this amount should be utilized within 3 year period. If within the 3 year period, the unutilized amount is not utilized for purchasing a house or for constructing the house, then this unutilized amount will be treated as long-term capital gain. Okay. And if the new asset that is purchased, he is selling one asset, he is selling a house property and he is buying one house property. If this new asset is sold within three-year period, then this exemption will be withdrawn. The, exemption, the exempted capital gain will be withdrawn and it will be treated as taxable capital gain. So, I hope you understood this. So, as per section 54, as per this section 54, one residential house, the individual or the assessee is selling a residential house and he is purchasing or constructing a new residential house. Okay, only individual and HUF can claim this uh, exemption. And the time period for investment is one year before or two years after the sale, he should purchase the house if he is constructing three years from the date of sale. Unutilized amount deposited in capital gain account scheme and within three years, if the amount is not utilized, it will be treated as long-term capital gain. If the new asset is sold within three years, then the exemption will be withdrawn. Now, let's see how to calculate the taxable capital gain. Okay. Amount invested. Amount invested is nothing but cost of the new asset. Okay. If the cost of the new asset that is purchased or constructed is less than the capital gain, then capital gain minus amount invested. That is, 
we have a capital gain for example the capital gain is 5 lakh rupees and the amount invested is that is the cost of the new asset amount invested is 2 lakh rupees okay now see the capital gain is more and amount invested is less so if the amount invested is less then the taxable capital gain will be capital gain minus amount invested so the taxable capital gain will be 3 lakhs okay on the other side if the amount invested is more if the amount invested is more for example the capital gain is 5 lakhs the amount invested if the amount invested is 6 lakhs see in this example the amount invested is more than the capital gain so the taxable capital gain will be nil okay if the amount is less we will deduct it from the capital gain if the amount invested is more then there will be no capital gain no taxable capital gain at all clear okay. moving on to the next section it is section 54b as per this section if there is any sale of agricultural land any agricultural land is sold and a capital gain is earned then if he satisfies if the assessee satisfies the following conditions the capital gain will be exempted so the asset sold is agricultural land this land should be used for agricultural purpose for at least two years before the date of sale so before selling the land at least two years the asset should be used for agricultural purpose so this is the old asset which is sold when we are selling this asset a capital gain will be there so this capital gain if it is invested in the new asset what is the new asset that should be purchased agricultural land an agricultural land is sold and by utilizing the capital gain in that sale we are purchasing a new agricultural land then this amount will be exempted okay which assessee can claim this only individual and huf the time limit the period within which the new asset to be purchased is two years after the date of sale so if you are buying a land before the date of sale it will not be considered the asset should be purchased after the date of sale two years after the date of sale unutilized amount can be deposited in the capital gain account scheme and utilized within two years if not it will be treated as long-term capital gain if the new asset is sold within three years then the exempted amount will be withdrawn the exemption will be withdrawn similar to the previous section taxable capital gain is also similar to the previous section if the amount is less capital gain minus amount invested if the amount is more taxable gain will be null the next section is section 54d as per this section if there is any compulsory acquisition under any law if a land and building is compulsorily acquired then the capital gain will be exempted so the asset that is sold is land and building which is compulsorily acquired under a law this land and building must be used for industrial purpose for an industrial undertaking for at least two years before the date of acquisition so before the date of acquisition at least for two years the asset should be used for industrial purpose and out of there if there is a capital gain on this compulsory acquisition out of this capital gain the new asset purchase should be another land and building it should it can be purchased or constructed and it should be used for industrial purpose for industrial purpose a new land and building is purchased or constructed then the capital gain will be exempted this exemption can be claimed by any assessee individual huf company partnership firm likewise any assessee can claim this deduction the time limit within which the new land and building to be purchased or constructed is three years after the date of acquisition after the date of acquisition three years within three years the new land and building must be purchased unutilized amount to be deposited in capital gain scheme and utilized within three years and if the new asset is sold within three years it will be withdrawn the exemption will be withdrawn taxable capital gain similar to the previous section only so the next asset is long term capital asset being land and building as per section 54 ec 
in the previous section also we saw land and building but that land and building is used for industrial undertaking and it is compulsory acquisition under law here normal land and building it should be long term long term mean it should be held for more than 36 months so if any land and building which is held for more than 36 months if this asset is sold and there is a capital gain then this capital gain should be invested in specified asset what is that specified asset it can be redeemable bonds redeemable within three years bonds which are redeemable within three years and issued by national highways authority of india after 1 4 2007 but before 1 4 2018 or bonds issued by rural electrical corporation after 1 4 2007 before 1 4 2018 3 years redeemable bonds issued by power finance company after 15 6 2017 before 1 4 2018 then indian railway finance corporation after 8 8 17 but before 1 4 2018 the other one is redeemable bonds which are redeemable after 5 years and which is issued after 1 4 2018 and issued by national highways authorities of india rural electrical corporation so if a long term land and building is sold and any of these bonds are purchased then the capital gain will be exempted any assessee can claim this deduction the time limit is six months from the date of sale within six months the new asset should be purchased there is no capital gain account scheme here and if the asset is sold within three years then it will be uh, the exemption will be withdrawn and the capital gain will be treated as long term capital gain here again the same thing long term capital asset under section 54 ee long term capital asset as usual it means the asset is held for more than 36 months and if this asset is sold and the new asset purchased is units notified by central government here we have redeemable bonds under section 54 ec we have redeemable bonds which is redeemable after three years and five years under 54 ee any units notified by the central government any assessee can claim this deduction six months from the date of transfer there is no unutilized amount the unutilized amount cannot be deposited in capital gain account scheme and if the asset is sold within three years the capital gain exemption will be withdrawn so 54 EC and 54 EE is similar. Okay, only the new asset that is purchased will be different. Now taxable capital gain. So taxable capital gain is similar. Uh, that is if the amount invested is less, capital gain minus amount, amount invested. If the amount invested is more, taxable capital gain will be nil. But here one condition is, the amount invested shall not exceed 50 lakhs. If the amount exceeds 50 lakhs, then the remaining amount will be taxable. I will explain you this with an example. For example, the capital gain that is earned is 60 lakhs. Capital gain is 60 lakhs. Amount deposited, amount invested in this eligible redeemable bonds of 3 years or redeemable bonds of 5 years. If the amount invested is, for example, the amount invested is 70 lakhs. So, what is the maximum? The maximum is 50 lakhs. Even though the SSC has invested 70 lakhs, he can claim only 50 lakhs. And the balance 10 lakhs will be taxable capital gain so the maximum amount that he can invest that an assessee can invest is 70 lakhs for example if the assessee is inv investing 40 lakhs it is less than 50 lakhs so 40 lakhs can be deducted so instead of 50 we can deduct 40 lakhs and moving on to the next section which is section 54 f as per this section if there is any capital gain on transfer of long term asset other than residential house under section 54 under the first one which we saw under section 54 we saw a property which is used for a house property which is used for residence if it is sold and a new residential house property is purchased this is section 54 
under section 54F what they are telling us any long term asset any long term asset other than a residential house so a residential house is not this house is not sold if a residential house is sold it will go to section 54 if any other long term asset other than residential house is sold it will come under 54F so long term asset other than residential house long term asset is sold we will get a capital gain and this capital gain is utilized to purchase a new asset what asset is used what the new, what is a new asset that is purchased a residential house in india so the assessee is selling a long term capital asset not a residential house if a residential house is sold and a new residential house is purchased it will go to section 54 here other long term asset apart from a residential house any other long term asset is sold and a residential house is purchased this will come under section 54F. Who can claim this exemption? Only an individual and HUF. And what is the time limit? One year before the date of transfer or two years after transfer if he is purchasing the asset. If he is constructing the asset three years after the date of sale. Similar to section 54. So one year before the date of transfer or two years if he is purchasing the asset. If he is constructing three years. Okay. Unutilized amount can be deposited in capital gain account scheme. If the asset is sold within 3 years, the exemption will be withdrawn. Here, for calculating taxable capital gain, it will be a bit different from the previous calculation. If the amount invested is less, then we will calculate a proportionate amount. We will call this as proportionate amount. How to calculate that? We will apply a formula. Capital gain into cost of asset divided by net sale consideration so with this for, by applying this formula we will get one answer that will be the taxable capital gain when will we apply this formula only when the amount invested that is the cost of asset is less if the cost of asset is more then the taxable capital gain will be nil okay only when the amount invested is less we will apply formula otherwise if the amount invested is more, taxable capital gain will be nil. The next section is section 54G. Under section 54G, if plant and machinery and land and building is transferred. Why, why is it transferred? For shifting the industrial undertaking from an urban area. That is the SSC is shifting its industrial undertaking from urban area. And the asset can be a short term capital asset or a long term capital asset. So in this process of shifting if there is any capital gain and this capital gain is invested in purchasing new plant and machinery land and building. For what? For industrial undertaking. Okay. And who can claim this exemption? Any SSC. Any SSC can claim this exemption. And the time limit for investment is one year before the date of transfer or three years after transfer either one year before the date of transfer or three years after the date of transfer unutilized amount can be deposited in capital gain scheme unutilized within three years if the new asset is sold within three years then the exemption will be withdrawn the next is 54 ga this is similar to 54 g the only difference is Shifting industrial undertaking from urban area to SEZ that is special economic zone. If the plant and machinery or land and building is sold in the process of shifting the industrial undertaking from urban area to special economic zone. And new plant and machinery and land and building is purchased for industrial undertaking in the special economic zone. Any SSE can claim the same thing one year before the date of transfer or three years after transfer. Capital gains account scheme. If unutilized amount deposited in capital gain account scheme and utilized within 3 years. If the new asset is sold within 3 years then the exemption will be withdrawn. Then taxable capital gain is similar. If the amount invested is less capital gain minus amount invested. If the amount invested is more taxable capital gain will be null. So this chart is a summary of so far what I have explained. Hope you have understood this exempted capital gains. Thank you for watching.